what's going on everybody this is your September 12th raw super show review um, before I get uh, too too ahead of the game um, everybody knows it's been advertised um, it's going to be edge appreciation night on Smackdown this week which we all know is filmed tomorrow night and I'm going to be there which is going to be awesome tickets and such but edge was also somewhere else tonight in Canada on the Score Network, which is what WWE comes on here in Canada, for those of you that don't know, they do a 15-minute pre-show before Raw comes on. That's why Raw in Canada is 15 minutes delayed to when, say, people in the States or people wherever else are watching it, which always leads to, you know, me getting sp things spoiled for me 15 minutes before they happen here. Thank you to my friends on Facebook and such and such. But they had, because it's in Canada this week, they had Edge on the pre-show, which was kind of awesome, lending his two cents to uh, Alberto Del Rio and Triple H and a couple other uh, things coming up at Night of Champions. Then, and uh, So yeah, I thought that was a cool little thing. He's in Toronto, he's from Toronto, they had him on the thing. That's fine. The other thing I'm going to say is, one of my videos a couple of Raws ago... I, I subtitled the uh, the Raw review, Wow, Night of Champions is going to suck, or Night of Champions looks weak, or something along those lines. I'll have to look back and uh, see what I actually wrote. But whatever I wrote, I was wrong. I'm actually looking really, really, inf really, really forward to Night of Champions right now, as we stand. But, um, so thought I'd correct myself there, and here we go into tonight's show. We open up with Alberto Del Rio ranting about respect, ranting about how he should be treated, ranting about how he doesn't care if anybody boos him, which was kind of contradictory. I don't care if you boo me, but you should be cheering me. And, you know, ran, um, bragging about how he took out Ray when he first debuted. Uh, he retired Edge, which was uh, not a great thing to say in Canada. He beat Punk at SummerSlam, you know, with the money in the bank thing, after Kevin Nash and John Cena did all the work for him, whatever, 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 and keeps blathering on like he does. He's interrupted not by Bret Hart, or not by John Cena, but by Bret Hart, which, you know, obviously gets an amazing reaction in Canada, because Bret Hart is Bret Hart. Comes out, says, I'm not here to disrespect you, I want to offer you some advice on how to be a champion and what it is to be a champion. Alberto Del Rio obviously comes back with, you can't give me any advice, I'm the best, you look like a bum in your 20-year-old leather jacket and greasy hair, etc., etc., etc. They are interviewed, or, eh, I can speak tonight, I swear, they are interrupted by Cena, and because we are in Canada, he is almost booed out of the building. Uh, everything's different in Canada, you know, if you, uh, if you've been watching wrestling for any more than maybe five minutes, you always know that everything's a little different. They call, uh, the announcers, you know, have called it Bizarro Land over the years, and I said it on Facebook tonight, I want to make a drinking game out of, take a shot every time one of the lame-ass American announcers refers to Canada as Bizarro Land, and you will be plastered by the end of Raw, I guarantee it. But... John Cena comes out, gets booed, sucks up to Brett, and tells off Alberto like he usually does. I don't know where this ridiculous bromance between Brett Hart and John Cena came from, but it doesn't fly in Canada. You know, when you look at somebody who's a legit wrestler and look in the other direction and see John Cena. Anyways, um, typical, I'm going to beat you at, at uh, the pay-per-view, blah, 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 you won't be able to run from me, this and that. Alberto Del Rio tries to say that John Cena should fight Ricardo tonight, which which I was just like, ah, we're going to see Cena beat up the announcer again. It's going to be awesome. Cena suggests that Alberto Del Rio should fight Bret Hart, which I would have loved to see under different circumstances. John Laronitis interrupts both of them. He gets booed louder than John Cena, which I thought was really funny. Sets up a tag team match between between Alberto Del Rio and Ricardo versus John Cena and Bret Hart. And I'm thinking, awesome. Two wrestlers, a retired wrestler, and an announcer in a tag team match. Oh dear, that better not be the main event, was what I was thinking, really. Come back into a match that I was gr really, really grateful to see. Uh, you guys know I've been saying for a long time, you get 
Alex Riley, John Morrison, and Dolph Ziggler in any combination, in a triple threat match, any pick any two of them, and they're going to have a great match. Now, you throw in Jack Swagger, and you have uh, Jonathan Mor or John Morrison and Alex Riley versus Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler tonight, which was set up by Vicky Guerrero because she's trying to make Swagger and Ziggler get along, and they're not going to, and it's ridiculous and whatever. WWE could do without Vicky Guerrero, but that's another story. Morrison and Swagger, when they are in the ring, look awesome against each other like they always do. Alex Riley completely zooms over Swagger when they are in the ring together, which makes me happy because I want Alex Riley to get pushed and I want Jack Swagger to go, you know, join the ring crew or something. But as Alex Riley beats uh, Jack Swagger, Ziggler sits at the side of the ring and watches with a not-too-upset look on his face, I will have to say, and that made me smile a lot. So there are your winners. Jonathan, John Morrison and Alex Riley beat Swagger and Ziggler, or Team Vicky, or whatever you want to call them. Truth and The Miz are interviewed in the back. They take a mic, they start a big rant on Triple H, they start a big rant on Punk, they make their way up to the ring. Um... A lot of good points, you know, they want CM Punk to win because Triple H will no longer be COO and the conspiracy will be over and da 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 But they think, you know, they think Punk is full of shit too, so awesome, they should be in the main event all the time, da 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 Miz fights Kofi. Um, <laughs> Kofi got one or two good shots in here, but all I've really got written down for this match is Miz's new face-first uh, cutter type move that he's doing. His, you know, snap DDT from the knees, his, his, uh, his other cutter that he does from the top rope, and skull crushing finale for the win. I'm not saying that Kofi Kingston didn't look good in this match, but all the memorable spots came from the Miz, which doesn't really surprise me because I mark out for the Miz like a fiend most of the time. But you would think WWE would want to make their tag team champions look good going into Night of Champions on Sunday. I, uh, I don't know. Miz and Truth still look good. That's all I really, really care about. Um, in the back, Teddy Long announces from Triple H, from the board of directors, from whoever and whoever and whoever else, because Teddy Long himself doesn't have any actual authority anymore. He's basically playing bitch to Triple H, which I find amusing. Um, U.S. title, fatal four-way match at Night of Champions, if we didn't already see this one coming. Ziggler, Swag Swagger, Morrison, and Riley at Night of Champions. Vicky comes in and bitches at him. She winds herself up in a match with Kelly Kelly. Oh, good times to be had by all. Mike McGillicuddy and David Otunga, who I still have not given up on. I don't care what happens to them. Uh, versus King and another mystery opponent, and the mystery opponent turns out to be Sheamus, so the match turns out to be, you know, McGillicuddy and Otunga beating on the King for, like, a second, and then the two of them getting destroyed by Sheamus. You know, Sheamus is in the midst of one of the biggest face pushes in recent memory, so as soon as he was announced, you knew what the, e the end result was going to be. All right. Bret Hart and John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez consisted of Alberto Del Rio running away, John Cena mocking uh, Ricardo, John Cena beating down Ricardo, hitting him with the attitude adjustment, uh, Bret Hart basically sitting back contently and watching until he gets the tag, puts on the sharpshooter, and wins. Um, what I found funny was through most of this match there was the very, very loud Cena sucks chance, and at one point Unless I am delusional, there were a lot of CM, there were some CM Punk chants in this match, which when he's not even in the match should tell you what the fans think of CM Punk. Awesome, great, you know, pay attention to your crowd. Every now and then might be nice. They put together a very, very long and involved video package, not only about 9-11, but about the smackdown that happened two days after 9-11, where America decided, hey, we're going to... Uh, we're going to assemble, we're going to have fun, we're going to do things, and all that. It was very good. It was narrated by John Cena, not that well, but it was it was really good. It was nice. It was respectful and proper and all the things that uh, we would expect them to do, because when it comes to stuff like that, WWE, as TNA did last night, are really, really good with stuff like that. <laughs> Kelly Kelly versus Vicky Guerrero consisted of 
Kelly Kelly throwing the worst Luthez press in the history of wrestling at Vicky. Ziggler and, and uh, Swagger fighting on the outside. Vicky being distracted, getting pinned, and Kelly getting a win. Um, you all know I'm not a fan of Kelly, but going into a Divas Championship match this Sunday at Night of Champions, I thought they would have done something to make her look you know, strong going in. Um, Beth tries to jump her at the end of the match and fails, so I guess that's loosely associated, but it was really, really sort of tacked on, and it was really uh, a comical portion of the evening rather than a build-up to uh, to what is looking, like I said, a, like a decent pay-per-view. It's it's looking decent on its own because WWE's not doing very much in on this Raw to promote it, to build to it. Um, we have a video highlight reel of Triple H's past in-ring stuff, which I thought was great, countered by a very, very boring Mark Henry backstage rant about how he's been held down for so long, and that's why he's angry, and he's PMSing, and his tights are too tight, and uh, if I swear to God, if they put the belt on him this Sunday, I'm going to cry. That's how that's going to go. Orton Rhodes 2 happened tonight on Raw, which I thought was awesome. Um... These two had a great match last week on SmackDown. I think Orton, despite all the arguments I've been in lately on the in the YWC about Randy Orton, Orton did a great job of making Rhodes look good. He didn't win on SmackDown, but he still came out looking like fucking gold. Um, this match, you had Mark Henry on the ramp. Orton loses his shit, grabs a chair, goes and chases him away. Comes back, you know, eats a really, really nice high knee... It was either a high knee or a beautiful disaster kick. I really couldn't tell which because of the camera angle. It was kind of shitty. But it was off of the ring apron to Orton on the floor uh, by the rampway, which is different, whatever. Um, Mark Henry comes back and he sits. Mark Henry doesn't do anything. Mark Henry sits on the entry, the, the stageway. And what's creepy about it is he doesn't sit there and, and try to look scary. He just sits there and looks very, very, you know, content. Which, coming from Mark Henry, is more scary than him trying to be scary. If you think about it, he just sits and watches the match. Um, with all the distractions and all of this stuff, um, Orton and Rhodes still do manage to put on a really, really decent match. Cody Rhodes takes off the mask, beats you know, uh, Orton in the face with it, hits Crossroads, and gets the win! For those of you who say that Orton never lets anybody else win. Oh, oh yes. Um, Henry jumps him, predictably, at the end, gives him a manly, manly shot in the back with the chair, and you could see him just sort of twinge when he, uh, when he went down and, you know, Mark Henry just ragdolls him a bit, and okay, we're all set. Everybody's all nice and pissed off for a night of champions. CM Punk and Triple H have the last segment of the show, and they went on for a good ten minutes verbally at each other. I won't even try to summarize everything that they said in this promo. I won't try to summarize all the sort of, you know, shoot emotions that were involved in this promo. It was fucking fantastic. If you didn't see Raw tonight, do yourself a service. Go watch a replay. Go watch, um, I don't know when Raw repeats wherever you are, but find this last segment on YouTube. Do what you gotta do to see this match. Uh, or not, not match, verbal match, I guess. But this, uh, this last promo that they cut, um... When, uh, when CM Punk Triple H got in each other's face, got all nice and personal. Uh, Punk's mic cuts out and he blames Triple H, which was kind of interesting because Triple H is in the ring with him. Uh, Triple H gives him his mic, it cuts out again. Triple H grabs him another mic from outside and he says, you know, go ahead, drop your last pipe bomb before Sunday. Finally gets this third mic that actually works, doesn't say anything, plows him in the face and leaves. Anybody else, it would have been a total heel turn move, but the way... Um, the way they've got uh, CM Punk filling this sort of anti-hero hero role perfectly. It was the way to end the promo, and it was fucking tremendous. Anyways, that's that. Scores, fails, and MVP. Score. Um, I know I shit on this last week, but I've given it some more thought. I like these challenges coming out of Jerry the King Lawler for McGillicuddy and Otunga. 
uh, king coming out randomly with different partners. I'm going to keep poking fun at you. I'm going to keep challenging you. I'm going to keep, you know, until we see some personality out of you, until we see some some better wrestling out of you, until we see, you know, some kind of fire. Because I, I can see if they do this properly, they've got it set up. Whereas you know Nexus or you know the team formerly known as Nexus, they keep trying, they keep trying, they keep trying, they keep trying, and they keep failing. And eventually they'll get it. And when they get it, they will get over. If WWE does it that way, I can see McGillicuddy and Otunga going big from there. I still like watching them wrestle. They're not the most, you know, it's it's literally true. They are not the most charismatic uh, pairing in the WWE. They're not the most exciting team, but they're a good, solid team to watch, in my opinion. Not nearly as flashy as Air Boom which is what WWE goes for these days, it seems. But they are a decently skilled team to watch, and I really hope they don't totally get buried. Um, two matches I'm really, really looking forward to for Night of Champions. The, uh, the four-way for the U.S. title. Couldn't ask for more. I could ask for Swagger not to be in it, but that's not really going to bother me too much. And Truth and Miz and Kofi and Evan. Um, it's the first match in a long time that... the tag team championship match for a pay-per-view has felt like a big event match. Uh, partially because, you know, we have an exciting new team that actually acts like a team, and partially because of the absolute star promo power and star character work and uh, whatever else you want to call it from R-Truth and The Miz, and how Miz being fully cocky and Truth being out of his mind have melded together so well that people want to see where this goes. I hope they don't, you know, go have one attempt, fail, and then break up, and then have a Truth and Miz rivalry, because although that would be fun, I think they both could do bigger and better things, like enrich the tag team division. Right? Right. Um, general score goes out any time you see Bret Hart on TV, as far as I'm concerned. Good old Canadian boys gotta stick together. That is that. My fail! We have two non-wrestlers wrestling tonight. We had Vicky Guerrero getting smoked by Kelly, and we had Ricardo Rodriguez ragdolling for uh, for John Cena. Ricardo Rodriguez getting ragdolled by John Cena does not do anything to make John Cena look any better for his match on Sunday, and like I've already mentioned my thoughts on uh, Kelly Kelly and how Vicky doesn't help her at all really look good going into her Divas title match. Doesn't make any sense at all, especially to have two in one show. That's really, really bad. Um, I'm not saying it just because it's Cena, but Cena shouldn't do a drop kick. He just looks funny when he does it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Last thing, and I don't even know if anybody else saw it, you know, the whole Vince McMahon, Bret Hart, you know, Bret screwed Bret, Vince screwed Vince, etc. There was a Bret screwed Bret chant in the book, or uh, Bret screwed Bret sign in about the second row of the arena, which I wouldn't even have taken notice of, except they're in Canada. That's not right. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, MVP for the night, I'm going to say is Seamus, actually, because he did entirely steamroll um, McGillicuddy and Otunga, but he did it in such a way that they didn't look like rag dolls. They didn't look like they'd completely been squashed, even though they completely were, if that makes any sense at all. So, good on him, good on uh, good on everybody for the wrestling tonight. Some of the the lack of build-up to the pay-per-view this Sunday is, is, is noticeable. Like, if this is your go-home show, you didn't do much to, to go home. But, as, as, as an individual episode of Raw, this one was not too bad at all. So, guys, that has been your September 12th Raw review. I have been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. And start a conversation. Leave your questions for Q and A in the moderator, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.